So we are at Velo Bavarium, a very lovely bike shop, where today we've been spending some time with Dan from UK Bike Fit, just basically just dialing in the fit a bit more for Badlands, just to make sure that it's as efficient as possible for riding through many deserts. And when do we leave? Friday for me, Saturday for you. And then when is the race? Sunday. <laughs> this bit, you can carry that don't, bit. Don't strain yourself with that bike, will you? It's very heavy. We didn't actually change an awful lot about your overall position, did we? The, the main just thing a case of like refining, wasn't it, really? The main thing we did was move the saddle back a little bit. Just to... The yeah. main thing we did was straighten the saddle. There we go. That's our first problem done. It's worth coming here just for that. Yeah, there we go. There we go. We job done, mate. You know, we'll, we'll gloss over that, shall we? Yeah, let's not think about that one. <laughs> And I've never seen you more excited about a bike set up than this. Have you shaved for me? I have shaved for you, you tell. <laughs> this is good as it can. <laughs> I haven't shaved there. <laughs> no. So we moved that back a little bit just to um, make it a little bit more suitable for endurance riding, which is obviously what you're going to be able to do for the next, uh, next couple of weeks. Mm. So just to help balance out workload between quads and glutes a little bit. Um, make sure you can basically pedal to the same consistency that you do on day one to the, the last day. Okay, saddle height looks and position looks good. Mm. Uh, we can probably make it a bit more gravel specific or endurance specific by bringing you backwards ever so slightly. I think it's just saddle height, as soon as we come back, we're raising the saddle height basically. So yeah. we might have to come back down again. Yeah. But. The, the stack height difference isn't going to be. How much are we short on it? 5 mil the cranks? 170.5 for 170. 2.5 mil. It's not a lot, is it? It's, yeah, it's going to bounce out pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I don't really understand why bikes always come with 170 longer cranks. Longer cranks or. 175 cranks should like rarely exist. Yeah. There's very few people that would suit 175 cranks, but the whole range is just set too high. Yeah. The whole range needs to come. Same with handlebar whips. Handlebar whips, yeah. It's a, it's a historical thing, like that's how it's always been. Yeah. So yeah. the industry takes time to catch up. <laughs> All right, 170s, and I've got big legs. Yeah. One of those annoying things, the bike industries. Welcome to today's episode where we fi find out about the things that all bike fitters hate. <laughs> Saddles. Handlebar crank whip. Lift. Handlebar whip. Stems. Geometry charts. Geometry charts. Because they're all different. Side of charts. Stack height of shoes. Shoes. <laughs> Integration. Where do we start? I don't think there's anything bike fit like. Copy. Copy. Yeah, copy. Don't get hung up on the, on the numbers, so a couple of degrees here and there, like the difference between each pedal stroke is going to be a degree or two. So hence why numbers are a little bit. If you slide forward 5mm on your saddle, because you're going uphill or whatever, just for comfort, yeah. that's lowered your saddle height by a couple of degrees in your knee angle. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, numbers are sort of part of it, but not the be all and end all. Yeah. Um, having said that, jump forward and then raise the saddle up. If you went for a ride now and did a couple of hours, yeah. it'd feel normal. Yes, I think it's the difference between the two that you're feeling. Yeah. Now that is an optimal position. <laughs> Great uphill, I wouldn't be able to pedal much. <laughs> Yeah. Cool, try that. It feels higher than it was before, but it also feels like I'm less pushing on the front. Okay. Less pressure through the hands. Yes. So keep going. Maybe look a little bit rocky on the saddle. I feel a bit more rocky. Yeah, for the smoothness of that's nowhere near what it was. Yeah. So at the bottom of the pedal stroke, your knee's decelerating quite a lot. I think it just looks a little bit laboured through the bottom of the pedal stroke rather than... It's more than snappy. Exactly, yeah. If we look at your foot position, if we were to measure that, probably a little bit more toe down than what you were. Because you're going to be relying more on your calf mm -hmm. and your foot to finish off that extension rather than quads and glutes. Haven't we were at 29 something before? So. Yeah. Let's get to a position where we just get that smooth pedal stroke back. Not worry about the number. Yeah, it definitely felt choppy. Yes. I like that. that. Choppy. Choppy. Choppy is the word. Snappy and choppy. What's the 
pressure in your hands like that. Or we further back, like here. Not here, more. Yeah. Where we started, it felt like it was more top heavy. Yeah. It's a little bit easier when you see these things day in, day out, but the hip and lower back and the pelvis is a lot more stable as well there. Yeah. And the knees just, again, straight up and down. Yeah. There's no real deceleration if you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel too high, too low, or anything. So, I've got that adjustment going back without changing the official saddle height if you like, if you need. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So, front end of the bike. Yeah. This one's in way further than that one. That one's fine. <coughs> that one's not. That one annoys me. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree with you. <laughs> Good. Um, let's get the clip-on bars on. Yes. But then, obviously, fitting the bars, fitting the, the aero extensions for you, the aero coach, um, clip-on bars, which was an experience that we went through together. We stuck stuff. We made it in the wrong places. Stuck things in the wrong places. Um, made some phone calls. Made some phone calls. <laughs> made some calls to people that know better than us. Yeah, spoke to the big boss of Aero Coach to ask him how to do it. It just doesn't work. Right. This goes on, and then that screws into the tops. I mean, if only they put instructions in the box. <laughs> Looks like a parking ticket. So I call up Zab. Hello darling, um, good. Uh, we're currently doing this stuff, you'll probably see. Yeah. Just trying to work out, are we being stupid? Yeah. But how, this is the right way that this goes, yeah? Correct, because it is. That way? Yeah, there you go, there you go, yeah. That so again, you that's what we're missing. You do that, and then you attach the ass onto the outside of it. That's where we were being stupid, is what way this goes round. Bye, 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 bye. He's a clever man. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you've got it upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Main priority of this is comfort. Yeah. When this is all, after this race, I'm going to permanently put them on the Caledonia. Are you? Yeah, because I'm, I'm using that bike as a long distance thing anyway. Yeah. 34 tyres on it, and just leave it on there. I can't believe you not clean this for the photos. It's not that bad. It's disgusting, mate. Not that bad? <laughs> it's not that bad. Jack saw it a couple of weeks ago. It was bad. It was bad. This is clean. This is clean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not to spot off. Put one. I'll put it where I think it's right. Right. Let's get these on. There. No. <laughs> so much real estate to hang stuff from. That's what. That's the main reason for using the bike package. A lot of the times when you're using clip-on bars on road bikes, it's really difficult. You you you're often compromising in between road position, TT position, like one of them's going to suffer. Mm. But actually, the adjustability on those bars is great, actually. Mm. You're able to get the armrests far enough back that you're not overreaching or you're not too low, got plenty of spaces under there. So it'll be a nice, nice bit of a break for you to have a different position that you're going to be riding in most of the time, just to offload some pressure. They're actually good in the sense that you can still get access to everything. That's yeah. normally a concern. All the way back to the way to go. <laughs> that's, uh, that's long enough. Yeah. Feels good. Actually, feels quite good. Yeah. I like the fact that the high sides are on there. Yeah, yeah. And like, you can also ride along like this, which is a, definitely something I do quite a lot. It looks like it, it looks like quite a nice, just TT. It's comfortable in general. Yeah, the, really having this like channel to it. Yeah, makes it really comfortable. Yeah, we have gone all the way back. Yeah, it feels good. You need it all. And there's still easy to get there. Easy to get there. I wish I could say it's one we made earlier. No second chances with that. No, when it's stuck, it's, it's stuck, isn't it? Yeah. I'd give myself an eight out of ten for that one. Look at that. You've actually painted it quite in the corner. Hey, worked in design for many years. Are you going to say it's therapeutic then? Yeah, I was That's actually. Punch in the face. <laughs> this is the least therapeutic thing I've ever done in Surely the tactic here is you stick it on here and then put it on. What? Stick it there, and then put the pad on, no? Yep. Uh... Yeah, we'll fuck you. <laughs> I'd just like to say, my method worked too. <laughs> <laughs> this should not. Basically, like so, and then these go around, yeah. around the, like there. 
I'm using this for like quick grab stuff. Yeah, like down jacket, rain jacket, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. The last, one last thing to try and figure out. That is fucking snug as a bug. Oh, look at that, that's freaking awesome. I, I love this part, like setting things up. It's fucking great, this is cool. Okay, so we've kind of got that jazzed in. Nice setup. Just need to get this jazzed up. Ah, that. And then rear pack on the back. Thank you. No, not at all. You get a lot of people that go, oh, how much is your setup weigh? And I'm always just like, I'm just because it's heavy. Yeah. It, when it gets to a certain weight, it doesn't matter anymore, does it? No. Like a child. Definitely another one on me somewhere. Yeah, but that's fine. But we're not going to use it on the gnarly gravel. That's still light. It's not bad, is it? Then I won't just go on it. <laughs> you can live on this. Pretty heavy. That's not that bad. About the same as your form. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to make myself look less like a lycra clad gimp. I can go and video. <laughs> So what have you done there? Uh, just plugged. So that's running into this splitter. The splitter goes to just the left shifter because the left shifter is connected to the right shifter. It's all connected. So I don't know where he's going to hide it all. So we went, in the, the end, the best solution we found with this was uh, XTR yeah. DRT remake, the goat link, and then the big boy cassette. That works. 50, 50 yeah. yeah. And it, does it, does it need the goat link? For yes. it? Yeah. Because the max on that is probably a 46. 46, yeah, yeah. Because it's the 11 speed, isn't it? Yeah. Whee! Whee! We put a new bottom bracket in. What more could you want, right? Like a kid. <laughs>